Hi, welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Uh, my name's Sharon, a Vivid Days is what I go under. I'm going to be doing uh, one of my first uh, resin art pours. Currently I've got my little helper who's going to end up pouring me my uh, resin in my hardener. Uh, I'll explain a little bit along the way. Uh, my hope from this video is just to give somebody the confidence to have a go and try it. Um, it's fun, it's sticky, there's a lot of preparation doing, uh, but um, you can have some real fun. Um, I'm currently using Mastercast, which is one-to-one -one resin. Uh, I have used Art Resin, both equally as good, but Art Resin were out of stock, so I'm trying Mastercast. And the UK weather um, in winter gives me slightly less working time with Mastercast than it did with resin. But we'll see how we go. So I've currently poured out 150ml of resin and we're now going to add the hardener to it. Uh, the great thing about both Mastercast and Art Resin is it's one to one. So there's not a lot of science that goes into the measuring. Um, just so you know as well, preparation, I have double gloves. Uh, it is quite sticky and there are times when you need to remove a pair of gloves and put another pair on uh, and not leave sticky residue everywhere. I have my mask on, I'm in a well ventilated area and I am going to start mixing uh, my resin now, uh, it takes three minutes. What I am aiming to do is just mix both the resin and the hardener together, mixing it fairly slowly but making sure I am uh, mixing it in in its entirety, otherwise you will have parts of your artwork that is not going to either harden or be left with a residue. You will notice as well you do get bubbles along the way. Don't worry about that, we have processes in place to reduce the bubbles. You will need the exciting blowtorch or a heat gun or a hairdryer and you just slowly mix it keeping your eye on the time. Other preparation I've done, I had this lovely box made by my partner, Mr. Neil Morley. Uh, that's just to keep my resin contained. I have pre-selected my colours in front of you. I've chosen six. Uh, my problem is knowing when is enough colour, enough colour. Very new to this form of medium art. Normally I deal with pencils, charcoal, oil paintings and a little bit of acrylic but I got some art resin for my birthday and I have become a little bit addicted. What I love about it is although you have a preset image or colour you may want to work to, um, you have to master the resin that it will actually control the painting. All you can do is try to manipulate or put a feeling that you want to capture within your artwork. The colours I have chosen is Peacock Green Pill Pigment, this beautiful uh, tropical blue. It's going to be a little bit of purple heart in there. I have Emerald Green, Solar Gold, and I've mixed two together, which is Super Bronze and a Dark Brown. I tend to prefer personally myself adding um, the powder colours to it, you usually get a very rich colour, but I've tried ink, I've tried oils and basically anything goes. The only thing you have to be mindful of is how do you want the colour, do you want it to be a fairly solid colour or do you want it fairly transparent? And I would just say give it a go, have fun. My spirit levels here, uh, just to help control where the resin is flowing as it is quite fluid when you enter it, it can fall off the sides. So I have put a little bit of tape underneath the edges which just helps with the curing process or the hardening process. I apologise if my terminology is incorrect, as I say I'm very new to this medium. It's fun. Um, I am going to be sourcing though because I have noticed that there is a little bit of waste when it comes to cups you're using from the mixing process so I'm going to be looking about environmentally friendly ones. Uh, once I understand where I can get those from and how to best clean up my tools afterwards. You can feel when it starts to mix beautifully. The consistency change and you notice that it does actually start to get a little bit easier. I have put the heaters on in my little art studio and I've had the 
or resin warming up for a good half an hour before I've used it just in a slightly warmer room as I say it's winter here it's very very cold and it does mean that um, the resin is a little bit harder to work if I do go quiet in this process I apologize I'll try to speak out loud uh, but art for me is a very relaxing process uh, and I'll lose myself in it as I'm learning uh, and as I'm practicing but what I'm feeling it's the very first day so January the 1st 2018 been a little bit poorly with the cold and this is my first day off the couch and I thought I wanted to bring in 2018 with art and get my first one down so who knows this may be a success it may be a failure but that's part of the fun it's experimenting learning um, and hopefully sharing a little bit of what works for me or what doesn't work for me with yourself so if you're giving it a go for the first time you'll have a higher chance of success so I believe I've been staring for three minutes now that's got a nice consistency I have pre put out my colors into containers so I'm gonna just move the colors out the way I'm not going to get put them fully away in case I do need to change the color make it a little bit deeper I have underneath got a lazy lazy Susan which is going to help me um, get to the different angles of my paintwork and I have found as well that oh, you don't want to be doing that for me um, I've had to lift the height of this because I do find with resin you're leaning over a little bit and because I do have a sore back I've got this on a set of drawers and it's lifted quite high so I'm stood up at a good level the whole time um, when you are distributing your resin it's sometimes wise to keep a little bit back for yourself just in case you need to add any other colors or whether you want to blend some of this with clear so I have uh, poured some that's pre-primed it's black I tend to find that I like the black background although you can work with it with any color uh, and I'm going to just be adding uh, the colors directly to it there's going to be no necessarily background color uh, I want it to represent a peacock feather I'm quite drawn to them very cleansing uh, but let's see if I can capture that so when you are distributing it think about how much resin you want to put in your colors and just be mindful that I have about a 20 minute working window so we are going to start distributing these colors and hopefully I'll be able to do it without the cups falling all over but my biggest colors are going to be my gold brown my blue and my peacock color so I'm going to make sure that I do distribute to these first and find that it moves quite nicely been mixing it quite a while and the bubbles the fun thing is going to be the heat gun that helps them bring to the surface and pop I should say that that's a um, that's the blowtorch and the heat gun will actually help you move but for me I'm actually going to try and oh, don't want doesn't matter once it's mixed if it does fall on your paintwork but I will mix them in and show you that you don't need a huge amount of colour uh, before it mixes through it's, it's quite impressive so I'm not necessarily going to use a lot of purple that's more just a highlight but I'll come back and see what I've got left the same with the green I try and blend that in with the blues uh, for the streaking in and the gold is going to end, add uh, to the browns and the bronze so I am going to go back now I think I've got enough of those colors and the rest of it is going to be put back to my blues and my turquoise they're the colors that I sort of associate personally myself with peacocks uh, peacocks remind me a lot of my childhood growing up mum and dad used to have a lot of feathers in there And I'm going to use it all, but what I am going to do is make sure that I tip any spare coming out there. I'm going to make sure I give this a good wipe down all the time, being a little bit conscious that of the time. A tip for me was having some good old baby wipes nearby. 
um, just to try and get rid of all of the excess so that you can reuse that next time. And as you start to see me mix this, this is where I'm going to be judging. Am I happy with the colour? Is it solid enough? Is it transparent? I don't particularly want it too transparent. I want the colour to be very vibrant, but a little bit goes a long way with resin. Uh, and again, you don't, my own personal choice is you don't have to buy a particular brand. Uh, have a little shop around, see what's within your budget. Experiment with all different types of colours. And you'll soon work what is your preference and also what reacts really nicely with different things. It's a beautiful, beautiful peacock green. It's got tiny, it's a bit blue and green in there, so I'm happy with that colour. I'm going to look at my, my blue. I have started to finally write things down now as I'm mixing them, so if ever I do want to try and replicate it or if people have got specific questions, I'll be able to share that. Make sure you do scrape around the bottoms and the sides again. Another beautiful rich colour. Although I'm thinking it might be a little bit too transparent for me. So I'm probably going to go back and add a little bit more blue to that. While they're resting as well, the air bubbles are coming to the top. Yeah, that one's definitely good, but I do need to add a little bit more blue. Let's have a little look at the green. I'm thinking the green may not be strong enough. You can normally tell straight away, but it's surprising if you don't gain all the corners uh, and all the time while I'm adding this uh, mica powders I have been using a little respirator uh, just because it is so fine particles you don't want to be breathing that in so the green definitely needs a little bit more I think I went a bit sparingly but you can always add you can't remove That's beautiful. Nice gold that's going to blend nicely with the browns. And I think I was about to say before, but I cut off because that's how my brain goes when I'm working with art. That I like to apply most of my resin to start with while it's fluid, but I actually like to wait until it's starting to go off a little bit where it's starting to get tacky and dry just before it starts to set because I find that way you've got more control if you want to do a specific thing. Whereas the runnier and the warmer it is, it does some amazing effects, bleeds together, um, but you're not really in control of what's happening. And sometimes I suppose you're surprised and delighted about that bronze. I've mixed the two colours together, the brown and the bronze. It's just made the most beautiful colours that's going to complement the gold beautifully so so far it's the blue and the green the purple it's more a highlight because when I'm looking at peacock feather depending on where it's glistening in the sun or reacting you get that nice little bit of purple coming through I do apologize for my sniffing okay so the purple's good I'm going to leave the purple I'm going to leave the bronze, I'm going to leave the peacock green, but I am going to add just a little bit of colour to the blue and the green. Everything else is the colour I want it to be. Some beautiful little shimmers on that. So I will pop my respirator back on while I'm dealing with the pigments. And I'm even going to take my glove off. So I'm not going to leave it tacky, but I can put those back on in a bit. Just a little bit more. I just want that little bit of depth. I think that should be good. Alright, let me just a mask on while I mix this okay that's beautiful you just got to take your time though and make sure it's all in that's a beautiful green all the time you can feel it thickening up okay very happy with that that's 
bits of that powder splash out there so you don't want to be breathing that in all right very happy with that so what i am going to do is get my peacock feather that i use just for inspiration i'm not going to try and make it look like a peacock feather otherwise i may as well take a photo of it what i am trying to do is just for me capture the essence and the mood all right so i'm gonna pull my colors down here so that when i do get any drips i'm trying not to contaminate them with each other but i do have to reverse what i'm doing because i want to make sure that my colors in the middle are actually the colors so we'll capture some more nice little bit of resin now what that will do is it will water down the other colors and you might get some nice effects I am going to bring my feather just to try and inspire me. Oh, I might stick it there. The last thing I want to do is get any oil on these because I'm currently doing a big uh, oil painting on my feather. Uh, well, not my feather, a peacock. And I just want to make sure I'm going to capture some of the shimmers that you get in there and everything. So that's just placed at the side of me to remind me. So. I am going to want to do my edges in the bronze, not all the bronze, I need to keep some of it down. So I will just scoot this to the edge, see how I go, and then I am going to keep some back for the middle part of the feathers. But all I'm going to do is you know, just drag that to the edge. So you have a choice, you can get your resin to go all over the edges, or you can just leave it at the top. My personal preference, where possible, is to drag it over the edges. Not everybody's choice, but it's your artwork. You give it a go, be true to yourself, and have fun. Once you heat it up, it will start running anyway, but sometimes you do have to drag it. Uh, and show it where it needs to go. So at this stage, resin is auto leveling, so you don't have to worry if you think that you're not. All I'm gonna do is start to put things in places where I want to be, color wise, and then I'll blend it all together a little bit and see what the resin wants to do. Uh, I probably will need to go back around the browns, but I just wanna make sure I don't lose too much of this beautiful color. Because here where I am gonna have to pop the air bubbles and then we have to show it that I want it to start going over the edge by just dragging it a little bit there. Or oh, seeing what it wants to do, really. Maybe a little bit more around the edge. It continually moves and it continually self levels, which is an amazing thing about resin some of that brown drag some back the other way oh, it's really not wanting to go over the edges yet that's okay stop dragging it back that it's starting to still keep different strokes in there that in itself is a beautiful thing as well because as it self levels you'll still start to see different movement in there oh, it's starting to go off the edge now <coughs> I do apologize now i'm going to slowly just add a little bit of the gold around the edge just want a fine line so i'll keep it moving Keep it moving. And then I'll keep another little bit of this because as I do another thinner ridge later. And right, and once I've done this, I'll blow torch just to get rid of the bubbles. Alright. Very happy with that. So I may need to use a different stick as I start to um, blend it through. Try 
trying to keep the different colours, just blend it a little bit. So sorry about the sniffling. It's very hard to wipe my nose <laughs> with a cold while I'm mixing my resin. Just trying to keep those feelings of the movements of the feathers. And again, at this stage, it's not about the overall image. Just trying to blend a few colours to keep that movement happening. And then I will put a brush through it all. In it. Oh, not brush, oh gosh, strokes through it all anyway. Okay. So I am going to blow torch this, wipe that, because I don't want any the dark brow going there. to hold it too long or set it alight but we are just wanting those bubbles to pop 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 just keep it moving keep it angled i'll do that now and then as i come around the edge i'm wanting another bit of dark brown in there Poor little feather. It's really the torch again and I'm going to start to drag the colours and I'm probably going to drag it that way because there's more bronze there so every time you heat it it makes it more dry but you can't keep it on too long otherwise it will of the colour as well. And the movement of the feathers.
tidying up my edges. I've got a little bit of resin left, so I'm tempted to just do a very quick, and I'd have to work very quick because it's going very tacky. Dirty pull. So I'm just going to do a final check, make sure I'm happy that all my edgings look like they're as neat as possibly can be. And that they're all connected with the top. Make sure there's no obvious really bad lift. Different levels. Okay, you can go. Do my messy pile. So edges are looking good, all coated, getting rid of all the massive overspills, which you'll probably find for an hour you have to keep coming back. The more you babysit it, the easier it's going to be for when you are looking at selling your pieces or displaying them because there'll be no ridges underneath them. Resin does find a way to get everywhere. too much left over or they're probably mixed up about 50 ml too much so next time i'll learn but sometimes it's better to have enough than not enough i'm checking that there is no foreign objects in there like hairs or anything i will tap it as far out of the way as i can one last check no otherwise i will put it to sleep and cover it up soon but just checking that and then i'll keep popping out every hour, well, every 15 minutes for the first hour. There's a nice, I'm gonna shim to that a little. The edge is, do need to put a little bit of something there. The resin has, there's an old hole there. excess resin on here so if I it's really really tacking up now I do do love this blue just to leave a little bit in my cup in case I need any more now I'm gonna add what's left of my I'm so sorry I've been very quiet while I've been doing this. <laughs> I will get better at commentary. That's the beauty of art for me. I lose myself in it. I might be able to show you what it looks like when you get your freaking... Um, <laughs> I meant to say when I get your heat gun out because I've not showed you that yet. Feeling the pressure of time. I've got no by means. I don't know how level this is, so it could be a disaster. But the thing I love is let's experiment. I think there should be enough to cover it just, but this is what I need to conserve next time and not use it. But it is always good to have one by just in case. It'll be the lime green. Pull that directly in. It's like some kind of lollipop. I will make sure when we've edited this clip, or when Neil has, um, I'll show you where it's turned out like. Overall, I look quite happy. Well, I am quite happy with the colours. 
for me. It's got a beautiful flow to it. Um, just go see what the resin wants to, to do in the morning. Has it stayed? Oh, <laughs> that's what happens when you put your resin, uh, your heat gun to your resin. Just try not to burn yourself as well. I'm just going to centralize this uh, because I want to make sure that where it's laid is not making it trip over but I'm going to try not impact the other one that I did my spontaneous one um, yeah so sorry it's an hour video I will get more efficient I'm sure I'm going to be editing it out sorry you can't really see with the glows um, the reflection of them but I will make sure we take a picture of them for you so you get to see them